Hey folks! Okay, this time around I want to talk about different forms of scoping rules. So, what we're used to in languages like C and C++ and Java and whatnot is called static scoping, where you can look at the source code and the structure of the source code tells you which variables are accessible at which points in the program. So, for instance, if you declare a variable globally, it's accessible everywhere. If you declare it inside a function, it's visible everywhere inside that function, If you, but not everywhere else. If you declare it inside a block inside the function, then it's visible inside that block, but not outside in the, uh, the rest of the function and not globally. And typically, the way static scoping works is that when you use a variable, the first thing it's going to do is check and see if that function is declared in the local scope, the most local scope. And if it is, it uses that one. If not, it checks the scope that wraps around that one. So for instance, you might check the block scope first and then check the function scope. And if you don't find it there, then you check the global scope. And if you don't find it there, then maybe you give up and throw an error. But you've got this sort of structure where you're going from the outside, the global, into narrower and narrower and narrower lo local scopes. So this is the idea of static scoping, where you can look at the structure of the code and tell which variable is going to be used by any call in the code. In dynamic scoping, you can't necessarily tell that. What, which version of a variable gets used can depend on the sequence of function calls that are made. So the way it works is like this. If you use a variable and it hasn't been defined in the function that you're in right now, then you check to see if the function that called you declared it. And if that function didn't, you check the one that called them. And if that function didn't, you check the one that called them, etc, etc, etc. And eventually you back up and you check the global scope. But you've got this, uh, this call sequence that determines what you can see. So for instance, if you've got a function f, and it creates a local variable x, and then calls some function h. And let's suppose that h doesn't actually have a variable x in it, but it prints x anyway. Then when f calls h, h goes, hmm, I don't, it tries to print x and goes, ah, I don't have an x. Who called me? f called me. Hey, f, did you have an x? And if so, then it prints that 10. On the other hand, if another, if we run the program and some other function g is running, and it has a local variable that it's called x that's named foo, and it calls h, then at that point h is going to go, who called me? Oh, g called me. Hey, g, do you have an x? And it, x or g is going to go, yeah, 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 I've got one called foo. And off it goes and prints foo. So which x h is referring to depends entirely on who called it, and who called them, and who called them, and who called them back up the chain. So this is the notion of dynamic scoping you can't necessarily know, just looking at the source code, which x is going to run. right? Which functions get called might depend on whatever values the user input as the program was running, so you have no idea whether f is going to run and call h, or whether g is going to run and call h. So, this is the difference with dynamic scoping. Alright, in Lisp, now you remember all those times I said that uh, def var is kind of creating these global variables? That's not really creating a, a global variable, so to speak. It's creating a dynamically scoped variable. So if I use def var and I create a variable x, then it's going through and saying, ah, <laughs> create me one of these dynamically scoped variables so that if somebody that I call uses x or somebody that they call uses x or somebody that they call, then it's going to use the most recently defined x in that call sequence. So, for instance, again, if we've got a function h where here we're going to print x, but h doesn't have an x, we're going to have a function f that creates a local variable x and calls h, and we're going to have a function g that creates a local variable x and calls h. All right, so again, if we call f, it's going to use, it's going to call h, and h is going to print f's x. If we run g, then g is going to call h, and h is going to print g's x. If we just straight call h, it's going to use that global x. Right? So 
with def vars, you do get this, uh, yeah, this is the behavior you have to be aware of. Now, you can actually create more local, if you like, dynamically scoped variables. So, I can go through and let's say I've got a local variable x, and I decide that from, from this point on in my call sequence, I want x to be treated as dynamically scoped. I'll declare x as special. And so now, if I call somebody else, you know, if I call some function and it uses an x but doesn't have an x, it's going to use mine, and so on down the chain. So you can make local variables dynamically scoped. Ordinarily, let block variables are statically scoped, just like regular variables in C or C++ or Java or whatever your favorite language is. But this is the way you can say, ah, I don't want a, a static scoped variable, ah, I want a dynamically scoped variable. So, something to keep in mind, it gives you this localized dynamic scope, right? And it's going to have exactly the behavior we just described, where if I say, if I create a, a variable y and give it some value, I say I want it to be dynamically scoped, I call p, then um, it's going to use my version of y. If I was to call p globally from outside that let block, then P's got no knowledge of a Y, right? The only reason P had knowledge of a Y in here was because we said inside my let block, that Y is special, that Y is dynamically scoped. So there's a, an interesting new twist to, uh, to look at when you're thinking of scopes and variables.